All right, so we're going to continue with our videos for Math 2580, um, Calc 4. We're now on to the next chapter. We're on to integration. And we're going to introduce the idea of double integrals. Um, so just uh, as, as a reminder, in Calc 1, if you're given some function, let's say, f of x, which is non-negative on some interval from A to B, you have this idea of, of area under a curve, right? So the picture, we know what the picture looks like. Something like this, we draw our coordinate axes. We have our, uh, let's say, A, B, got the graph of our function, and we have this notion of area because we can, we can kind of draw this in, right? This area under the curve between A and B, so this, this region here. And, and we, we know something about how to calculate this area, right? We know that, well, except for certain basic geometric shapes, we don't know how to calculate this area exactly, so we say, well, let's try to calculate the area approximately. And, and so we go through the whole process of, of dividing up our interval, right? Remember this whole idea of chopping things up. So we do this partition where we take A to be the first point, x0, and then we put in an x1 and an x2 and so on up to some last point xn, which is our endpoint, our B, right? And, and so this gives us a bunch of intervals, right, from x0 to x1, and then from x1 to x2, x2 to x3, and so on. And on each of those intervals, we take those intervals as sort of the base of a rectangle. And for the height of the rectangle, well, you choose a point, and it turns out not to matter, but you choose a point in the interval, and you plug it into your function. That gives you the height of the rectangle, right? So then you've got your rectangle like so. Okay, and so you do that for each interval, you calculate a height, you get a rectangle, okay, and, and so the idea is that we know how to calculate areas of rectangles, right, length times height, and the length is simply the length of the interval, the height is given by the value of the function, so you put this all together and you get the integral. So the integral from a to b of fx dx, right? And remember how this works is, well, you add up all the areas of the rectangle. So, so any particular rectangle has a, a height given by, say, f of xi, some xi, uh, with delta xi, and you add all of those up. But this is only an approximate area. One of the things that you work through and understand is that as you take smaller and smaller intervals as you add more points, as you add more rectangles, um, this approximation gets better, and the, you get the exact answer when you take a limit, right? So it's the same story if you're in more than one variable. So now we'll, we'll kind of switch gears and we'll say, okay, what if we're given, let's say z equal to f of x, y, and let's say z is bigger than or equal to zero. And, and we're going to do this now on, well, it's a function of two variables, so an interval isn't good enough. Let's move to a rectangle, okay? And the question, I guess, given, given this information is we can ask sort of, you know, what is, you know, the analogous notion. So rather than area, we could ask for what's the sort of volume under the surface. All right? So this is the same idea. And you know, we can draw it out as well and we can try to make sense of this. So what does the picture look like now? Well, um, now we're in R3, so we'll draw our three-dimensional coordinate system. We've got, 
you know, maybe A is here, B is here, C, D. So we, we get our little rectangle, right? And then we've got our function, our graph, the graph of the function while it's sitting over this rectangle. So maybe you have something that, you know, looks like this. Okay, there's your, your surface, right? So you can, you can at least sort of picture or make some, get some idea of what we mean by volume under a surface here. And so the question is, well, how do you calculate this volume under a surface? And, and you take exactly the same approach that you did for area under a curve, right? Which is, you say, I don't know how to calculate this volume exactly, but I can figure out how to calculate it approximately, right? So how would you, how would you approximate? Well, here we approximate by rectangles. So the next step would be, well, let's approximate by, well, we might call them boxes. Okay. So we'll, uh, we're going to pause here, I think, just so the video doesn't get too long. Um, we'll let you think about how you might do this, how might you approximate things by boxes. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll set that up in the next video. So we're going to break here. We'll stop. We'll come back with the next one. We'll show you how to set things up, and by the end, we'll have defined the double integral.